Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's um, Facebook Live. My name is Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, known across social media as DB Psychology. So today I'm going to talk about, um, you know, why children get bored in school, why they say they're bored in school. So, you know, I think we've all said this one. Oh, it's so boring. This is stupid. Why do I have to go? Um, you know, I hate school. We've all we've all said it. I mean, at some point or other, I think we've all said it. So it, it can be one we can just kind of dismiss. Oh, yeah, kids, phase kids are going through. Yeah, yeah grand. Um, and, and we can dismiss it. But if this keeps going, if the child keeps continuously saying this um, or or and um, they're also using avoidance tactics not to go to school, you know, or there's they're kicking up in school or they're kicking up at home or they're coming in, taking it out on their siblings um, when they do come in um you know it's one that needs to be investigated it really is one i wouldn't let go um and the the reason i say that is you know th something like this can escalate quite quickly um and become a much bigger problem but if we can get in there early um you know it's a lot easier particularly with children it, it's a lot easier to tackle than with an adult so um <clears throat> sorry um reasons kids would say they're bored I give quite a number of reasons in the blog and I'm not going to be able to cover all the detail this morning. I will kind of hit on them, but I'm not really going into any great detail where in the blog I do and I give you a lot of tips on how you can help particular situations. Um, so do check it out. It's at www.debrabyrnpsychologyservices.com. So let's get into it. Um, a couple of reasons they can um, say they're bored in school is they're genuinely are bored in school. Um, they're not being challenged, not being stimulated. So I'm thinking along the lines of a couple of groups here. One would be um, gifted children. Um, and of course, some gifted children also have what's known as hidden disabilities. Um, hidden disabilities are the likes of ADD, ADHD, um, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, um dysgraphia dyslexia and high functioning what well, high functioning autism what was known as asperger's and um, it can still be called asperger's as well by some people so basically you know these kids are quite intelligent they're not getting stimulated and you know don't assume that a teacher unfortunately will know how to handle a gifted child or how to handle a child with a hidden disability um in secondary school in particular, the particular teacher may not have seen your child's report. If they have a report, you know, if they are diagnosed, um, they may not have seen that report. Don't always assume that. So therefore, they're not modifying um, material to give to your child. Um, kids that are, you know, getting good grades, kids that are, you know, quiet can slip by um, the teacher quite unnoticed um and um therefore you know they tend to go under the under the radar until you bring up the matter to the teacher themselves um so if you need a diagnosis um, and your child hasn't received a diagnosis what i would do is i would gather my information i would talk to the teacher um, I would, you know, talk to other people. I would get everything I need. If you have any extra tutors outside of school, get their input as well. Go to the principal and ask for an assessment to be done. Now, the principal can refer a child um, uh, for assessment, and it's up to the principal to do that. In Ireland, they would refer them to NEPS. Now, as always, you can go and have your child privately assessed. If you feel that waiting for a free assessment is too long, you can do that. But very, very important that, you know, the the psychologist, the educational psychologist, whoever's diagnosing your child will want, um, you know, a clinical psychologist maybe will want um, information from as many different sources as possible. That's you, the teachers, the school. Um, any sort of school reports, uh, copies of school work, things like that, so they can make um, a correct diagnosis. So that's important. Um, the other thing I'd say to you, once you do get that diagnosis in place, your child is entitled to um, certain things. So, you know, the report can be quite daunting for somebody to look at. So I always say to parents, the diagnosis will be on the first page, usually in the first paragraph. And then skip to the end and look at the summary sheet because that is what the school looks like looks for 
this this list at the back that says this is what the child needs and requires to help them um so that's where you head to you see the diagnosis and then you head to the back page um and then you go in armed with that back page and say you know this is my child's entitled to this this and this and you apply and the school will apply for it and they'll put the resources in place hopefully but unfortunately um for most of these children it, you have to pay for extra tuition that is the reality of um school life particularly in ireland and um you know primary and secondary school for you to pay for extra tuition and that is a great burden on families and i've talked about this before the cost of disabilities um, and even the cost of having a gifted child is huge on, on a family so but i'm not going to go into that but it is it is one of the factors that you have to be aware of um the other thing i'd say to you is teach your child to set self-advocate as quickly as possible um you know it does help that if they're able to speak up it does help that they can you know check in that a teacher has the report seeing the report and then they can come back and report to you little ways they can talk up for themselves is very important because at some point once they get to 18 remember you're not going to be able to do it for them unless they give you permission and the school or the college knows that yes you're their advocate um they will have to advocate for themselves at some point so it is important to do that and the other thing with this is um you know a lot of times when kids are struggling and this will go as well for other problems that i'm going to talk about in a little while um, is that you know they begin to withdraw they begin to become very isolated they can feel very alone um they can feel like i'm very different and i don't fit in here i don't fit in with my peers they can fit in they can feel they fit in with older kids and that sometimes isn't appropriate um you know so it can be very isolating for them so i you know i would say to you is get them really involved in interest in the hobbies encourage them for anything that they're interested in at all or anything that they excel at at all and make sure you find out about it it really is a way of taking the pressure off them academically um if that's the case and it kind of gives you a way a, a, a door in to con communicate with them and reconnect with them again and a door out for them to come back out again and become from from this withdrawal state that they have they have done they've be become withdraw withdrawn so you know you really need to start drawing them out and this is the way whatever their hobby is whatever their interest is you don't have to learn everything about it in fact turn the table and get them to be the teacher these kids are you know very intelligent and they they have the information they put a lot of work into whatever they're interested in so it's it's a way to bring them back out and, and i would say it's a great way um, of keeping the lines of communication open even if it's about a television show um, even if it's about a film or you know comics or anything anything at all um i use comics with one of my children and it was a brilliant way one to get him to start reading again and to um to get him to get him talking again um so you know do what you can anywhere or everywhere and bring them back out of themselves that way and, and get the conversation going again the other thing is if you do get a diagnosis of course is to join a national organization um, with related to whatever it is so if it's disability it'll be the likes of the dyslexic association of ireland would be one that's very helpful but they and they would support other um disabilities as well there too um or there is a gifted society as well so you know look to join that these the parents that are involved there have a wealth of knowledge that they can give you um they have either already been where you are which is usually starting off at, at the beginning um and they can tell you the roadblocks they can tell you the things that you're entitled to because don't expect somebody um to give you that information once you get a diagnosis you usually have to go and hunt it out um and and they will be able to help you then think ahead through secondary school and into applying for college and that's a wealth of information um for somebody to have now again another word on hidden disabilities i would say to you an awful lot of these children they're very intelligent as i said they will hide those um on 
you know and quite often they'll cover up for an awful long time and as a result um they may not be diagnosed until their teens um and during that time um you know they may have been able to cover all through primary school and then suddenly get into secondary school but it and as i said it can become very isolating for them they can feel quite different than others um they can feel stupid they can feel you know then they've got shame and guilt and all that you know coming on them and the fear of being found out because they don't understand what's going on for them um and of course you've got the teen years as well bombarding them as well so you know getting a diagnosis there um is is generally a relief for these children um and then getting the support because they can they can see that okay i'm not stupid i'm not different um i'm just me and they can start to you know come back out of themselves once they get that diagnosis and um again you know your job as a parent will be to get that door open to get the door cracked open um, with whatever they're really good at and they're usually really good at something and um, but they have a really good interest in something and that's your line in that's your line in to get the communication in there to stop the isolation and to bring them back out and get the communication open and to help raise their confidence but as i said once they get the diagnosis they do tend to get that sense of relief and um, they're getting the support in place um and and it, it kind of you know rolls from there it's kind of a knock-on effect from there and um, other things that i um i talk about in the blog in terms of you know i'm bored in school kind of if there's problems at home um maybe something has happened at home um and of course we've had covid and i have to mention that um the kids can be very um anxious and maybe you've had a death in the family maybe you've had some sort of loss of death so separation and divorce of course ptsd and kids you know they need time to grieve out um, any sort of loss just as much as we do um they'll need support for that but if something has gone on um then they may be uh anxious not to leave you it's it, that's where it is so they're going to need an awful lot of reassurance there um they're going to need a lot of conversations around that the other thing they can do is they can pick things up wrong um or if one one we can miss quite easily is if something that maybe you say okay no, no we haven't had that we haven't had a death in the family we haven't had any separation or divorces uh there's nothing going on with us we're fine as a family unit um, but if there is something going on in the neighborhood, a neighbor or friends that they're, you know, neighbor that they're friends with, if something has gone on with a, a relative, if something has gone on with, um, you know, a friend of theirs, their family, the child is picking up on this or they could have picked it up wrong. That is the one thing you should be watching out for too. If somebody, the child doesn't have the same capacity as you or I to, you know, reason things out. Um, and, and I'm not just talking about ch children, small children, I'm talking about older children and teens as well. So they can pick things up wrong. They half hear things um, and that will have an effect. And that's one we will miss. That's one you can kind of dismiss or miss that they can be affected by something that's going on in the extended family or friends of theirs in their family. So we have to watch out for that one too. And that will make them anxious. And they're using this, I'm bored at school. I don't want to go to school. Um, as a way of highlighting something else underneath and that's why I say to you always there can be something it shouldn't be dismissed it should be investigated like what's the root cause is what we're looking for here um, you know the same with a school or an outside activity they could have picked something up wrong there could be problems there and they're half hearing or they're only catching snippets of some sort of um, uh, you know something going on within the organization or something going on within the school and again maybe they picked it up wrong or maybe there is something going on there but your child then is developing an anxiety around that um, and they don't know how to handle it so you need to be keeping those lines of communication open how have things been in school how have things been with whatever the group was that the, the class was the extra tuition was whatever it is you're always always communicating you're always checking in with the other adults involved in that group, the other parents of children that go to that group or go to the school, you're constantly checking in with them because this is giving you information. OK, maybe something came up today. 
we don't force the conversation we allow them to bring it up but as i said if they are picking up on stuff stuff it can cause um, anxiety and in particular at the moment children may have um social anxiety about going back to school and i do raise that in the blog and i know the schools are doing in ireland i can only talk about some of the schools in ireland um are doing a strategy for the month of september where um they're really talking to the kids about well-being and their mental health and they're trying to get the kids to calm down they try they realize the kids will have um anxiety around returning to school they realize parents will have an anxiety about the kids going back to school so they're really going to focus on that for the next month and um, which i think is is really great but what i would say to you is is if this doesn't settle down if this anxiety doesn't settle down then after that the end by the end of september um, I would be um, seeking professional help. I would be looking to go talk to my GP. Um, I would be looking for to get referral to um, maybe um, talk to somebody, a professional like myself um, that works with children. I don't work with children, but if you, you know, you, you pick somebody that's a psychologist um, or a child counsellor that works with children. They work with children, solely with children um you know you can of course yourself talk to them about well-being so you can of course and i and i do suggest about uh, meditation and i'll be talking more about fear on monday's blog in children and how um you can help children overcome their fear and boost their self-confidence um, and ways to do that so i will be talking about that and if that this is a problem for you for your child then i will be talking specifically and targeting that on monday's blog so do check out that um on monday the other thing is um you know kids can get very overtired they're going to be tired we know that first couple of weeks back in school they're going to be tired anyway but i'm talking about kids in general if they're over scheduled if kids and this is one to watch for teens in particular um teens can over schedule themselves so they can be involved in the sports they can be involved in all sorts of activities they're trying to do school work they're um you know they're not slowing down they're not giving themselves downtime enough downtime to just relax to sleep sometimes um and this of course will cause problems so this is one where you may have to intervene with a teen check exactly what they're doing every day check are they allowing themselves enough time to cover what they need to do um, and make sure that top priority is the sleep some time off for themselves just to chat with friends and relax and uh, maybe do some games or movies or paint their nails or you know girly things or anything like that that they need to do to just to just to you know relax down um, and take the pressure off activities and schoolwork um, but you know we may need to sit them down and say is this realistic is this timetable actually realistic and particularly with teens um older teens they are under such pressure with school work and that and having a, there's an awful lot of projects now in school that have to be completed towards exams um you know are they are they allocating enough time for those projects or are they leaving it all to the last minute do they have those skills um project management skills they probably don't and don't assume that the school is going to teach them that do they know correct study skills or organization skills that they can organize their work and it's not just everywhere in the room it's not just an explosion of paper um, or an explosion on their on their tablets now um, these are skills that we all need to learn but they're not something that um, is sometimes taught to us an awful lot of kids are not taught this but they are required to have it uh, particularly in ireland they have introduced um, class-based assessments and projects and that for the actual exams so you may not be aware of that because most of us didn't do that for our uh, junior and leaving certificate so they need help with that they need help with it. it's a project management skill that they need there and time management skills they need there so you may need to teach them that or you may need to request that the school brings in somebody to teach them that if you don't have those skills and it's well worth investing in. it really is well worth investing um you know some money in that sort of thing to teach them because it is something we can use later on um other problems again as i said if there's problems with friends and of course with teens there can be they fall in and out constantly but if there is a problem there with a particular friend maybe friends are changing over it's going to cause 
um, them to be unsettled. But there could be problems in a group or they could be being bullied. Um, you know, if there's problems with their friends, parents, as I said, that can cause problems then for you. And the excuse is I'm bored at school, but in reality, it's an anxiety and they don't want to leave you. They're afraid of losing you. They're afraid that something's going to get unsettled in their environment. Um, again, if there's problems in the group, in some sort of group, and I'm talking about when I say a group is, I mean, outside of school activities that they attend. Um, so anybody else, anybody that is coming into contact, whether it be a playgroup leader, whether it be, you know, um, a childminder, a, pe a relative, an extended family member, maybe your friends, maybe your friend is having a problem and the kids are hearing this. Remember that the kids are picking up on uh, other, you know, adults anxieties. They're picking up on little tiny bits of information. And as I said at the start, they don't have the skill set to understand it fully um, and to reason things out like we do. Their brains are not fully developed. Um, and the last thing I would say to you is I put in about motivation um, at the end of the blog. So do check it out because I've given you several strategies there to help them with motivation. An awful lot of the time that when there is a problem in school, um, they will it will come across maybe as a lack of motivation. And a couple of reasons I will I will highlight there is, you know, they're feeling overwhelmed with the workload. As I said, they may, you know, how do I do it all? How do I even start? So as I said, they may need project management, time management or study skills. The other thing is it's a lack of confidence and that their lack of they've taken a knock on confidence. And that, again, can come across as you know, a lack of motivation. Um, it can appear as a lack of motivation, but in fact, it's actually um, a lack of self-confidence on that. They've, their confidence has taken a knock its own way. So as you can see, you know, there are a lot of things that would need investigating. And it's not just a case of I'm bored in school or school is stupid or that teacher is rubbish. There's usually something underneath it and you need as a parent to go and investigate and try and, as I said, get in there as quickly as possible and, um, uh, you know, find out what's going on because we don't want it to escalate. We don't want that uh, problem to escalate um, if we ignore it. So I leave it there and thank you all for listening as always. And as I said, the blog, which targets fear in children and how you can help them will be out on Monday. And as always, thank you very much, Deirdre, for watching. And um, I will see you all again next Saturday morning for um, our conversation around children and fear and how you can help them.